following NBC Sports program is brought to you in living color. Early morning, New Year's Day, Pasadena. They've worked all year for this. And the bowl starts to fill up early. Some have already left the parade. Some even stayed overnight to see the parade in the Rose Bowl game, slept on the streets. And today, an all-time record Rose Bowl crowd of over 104,000 will watch Ohio State play USC as NBC Sports presents a look at the 1973 Rose Bowl game. And here we are, the Rose Bowl game. It's the granddaddy of them all. A Happy New Year from Kurt Gowdy and Al D. Rogata. You know, Al, it was just 50 years ago in the first Rose Bowl Stadium game that the Trojans beat Penn State by a score of 14 to 3. However, the fir very first game was played back in 1902, 70 years ago. And that point-a-minute powerhouse from the University of Michigan came out to play Stanford. Well, the game was a rout. Michigan won the game by a score of 49 to nothing. The game was so one-sided and so boring that the tournament committee decided that football wasn't the answer for their special day, and so they scheduled some other events. Let's take a look. So on New Year's Day in 1903, the theme was simply an afternoon of sport, and a varied menu of competition it was. Everything from track and field to grease pole climbing, egg and spoon racing. But soon to become the most popular event was chariot racing. And so it was for the next 14 years. Charioteers, inspired by the popularity of the book Ben-Hur that was sweeping the country, risked their very lives and limbs. Meantime, the New Year's Day morning attraction, the Rose Parade, which had begun as early as 1890, maintained its popularity. And it was enjoyed not only by spectators, but also by those parade participants who relished the challenge of creating unusual, eye-catching floral designs. Finally, in 1916, football was given a second chance. The popularity of the Rose Parade was undampened here in this scene from the 1916 parade. Originality and design continued to flourish, even in the rain. Washington State shut out Brown University 14 to nothing on January 1st of that year. The game was a crowd pleaser, and even a downpour and chilly 46 degree temperature could not dampen the spirits of those who realized that football in Pasadena was here to stay. And how about that press box, Kurt? Oh. Within just six years, plans were finalized to build a concrete stadium, and on February 7th, 1922, Construction began on what eventually was to become the world-famous Rose Bowl, so named by Tournament of Roses publicity man Harlan Dusty Hall. Despite somewhat primitive construction equipment and methods, less than a year later saw the Rose Bowl open its gates for the first time to a capacity crowd of 57,000. On that historic day for the city of Pasadena, January 1st, 1923. Well, it rained in that first game played in the Rose Bowl Stadium. Today, the weather is very windy. It's going to be a factor in this game. We'll be talking about it later. And Al D. Rogatis is going to carry you along with some of the highlights of the Ohio State season right after this. Hey, Pete, you guys can change back into soft clothes. I decided to give your purse snatch theory a trial. Out of uniform, but on duty, Reed and Malloy foil a purse snatching. Back in uniform, they face danger on the trail of two suspected killers. Follow the excitement on Adam 12, Wednesday at 8, 7 central time. Followed by Madigan. This is Richard Whitmer. On the Wednesday mystery movie, Madigan is hung up in Lisbon when he loses a killer he's bringing back to justice. See a tense 90-minute drama with Madigan at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time. Then... This is Tony Francios inviting you to join us on Search. Red light. Scanner completely out. You're controlled by me alone and there is no escape. You're God. On this island, I am. Watch Search, Wednesday at 10, 9 Central Time on NBC. Ohio State is number three in the country. They're nine and one. 
Some say this team is three yards in a cloud of dust. We think otherwise, and I think you'll agree. Woody Hayes is completing his 22nd season at Ohio State, and his teams have won three of four in the Rose Bowl. The Buckeyes have a big quarterback in junior Greg Hare. He's 6'3 and 198 pounds. Average, nearly four yards a carry this season. Hare is from Cumberland, Maryland, scored four TDs. Hare has a strong arm and has completed 49% of his passes this fall, three for touchdown. Halfback Rick Galbos was the leading pass receiver for Ohio State, catching 11. Sophomore fullback Harold Champ Henson led the nation in scoring with 20 touchdowns. The 6'4", 228-pounder from Asheville, Ohio, gained over 100 yards in four different games and finished with 772 yards rushing. Freshman Archie Griffin also gained 772 on the ground to tie Henson for the school leadership. Griffin gained 239 yards in his first game against North Carolina. Defense is a Woody Hayes trademark, and against Michigan, the Buckeyes allowed a score on only one of 12 plays inside the five-yard line. Tackle George Hazenhall, number seven, the defensive captain of the Ohio State squad. His teammates have voted him the most valuable player of the year, and the 262-pounder from Garfield Heights, Ohio, has made the first unit on several All-American teams. Hazen Hall is a natural leader. When he was in high school, he served as captain of football, wrestling, and the track team. Another Ohio State All-American is number 53, Randy Gratishaw. He plays what his coaches call the short linebacker position, but Gratishaw is hardly that. He's 6'3 and weighs 238 pounds. Gratishaw missed nearly three games this fall because of a knee injury and still finished second on ta in tackles. Well, that's a look at the Ohio State highlights. We'll take a look at now what happened for USC during their undefeated season right after this message. Is it possible that this planet Earth has been visited by travelers from outer space? Did they wander through the throbbing light years of the universe in search of other life and find it here? If we accept the premise that beings from another civilization visited here ages ago, then some of the mysteries of our past take on a new and startling light. Early stone carvers left silent records for their descendants to tell us something, but not quite enough. The world is a storehouse, an archive of unexplained phenomena. Gigantic creations, in effigy of what? To appease or acclaim whom? Folk legend surrounds their origin. Strange stories of gods who appeared riding across the skies in flaming chariots of light. Todd Serling narrates a fascinating NBC special, In Search of Ancient Astronauts, Friday at 10, 9 Central Time. John McKay is not a bashful man, and he comes right out and says that this year's USC team is the best one he's ever coached. 11 wins in a row. Let's watch John some of their action. brings the USC team to the Rose Bowl for the sixth time in 11 years. He's won three and lost two at Pasadena. The unbeaten Trojans feature a balanced offense. They've gained nearly 2,000 yards passing, with unanimous All-American tight end Charles Young grabbing 23. McKay says Young is the best tight end he's ever coached. Junior Lynn Swan not only caught 21 passes this year, but he averaged 11 and a half yards per run on flanker reverses and led the Pacific 8 Conference in punt returns with a 14-yard average. Sophomore J.K. McKay, the coach's son, topped Southern Cal in receptions with 25, four going for touchdowns. Fullback Sam Bam Cunningham scored nine touchdowns. He was third in team rushing, but the 218-pound senior is noted for his crunching blocking. Mike Ray is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country. He passed for over 1,500 yards, completing 55% of his tosses. He scored 97 points himself. Ray ran for almost 300 yards, many times after scrambling free from tacklers. And the senior kicked a school record eight field goals and 43 extra points. He won the Pop Warner Award as the most valuable player on the West Coast. For the first eight games this autumn, Anthony Davis wasn't even a starter for the Trojans. On December 2nd, this 190-pound sophomore became an instant celebrity. On that afternoon, in the Coliseum, he scored six touchdowns against Notre Dame. Two of those six-pointers came on kickoff returns of 97 and 96 yards. 
Davis finished the campaign with 1,034 yards rushing, most in history by a USC sophomore. His 16 touchdowns trail only Henson of Ohio State. Not bad for a young man who was a quarterback in high school and might become a pro baseball outfielder in two years. More of the color in the background here from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena right after this. I am just a young man who is coming home from war. It's a hard road I have traveled, but soon I will be home. Quietly remembering, oh, I have seen how boys grow into manhood and men fight for the dream. I went far through the mud and through the jungle where I thought no man could go. I learned as few men ever do. All that's gone now far behind me, now I'm looking for a job. In the last hour, the wind has diminished here at the Ro uh, Rose Bowl. 30 to 50 miles an hour was blowing this morning. It can still be gusting again. What about the wind uh, as a factor in the game, Al? Well, Kurt, knowing that both of these teams move the ball so extremely well on the ground, you have the fear that really it may not be that much of a factor. Where it's going to be a problem, probably the Trojans putting the ball up will be difficult, number one. The trouble could be in field goals, in just fielding kicks. It was incredible the amount of trouble they were having with the guts. Woody Hayes says that USC has never really been tested this year. They've never been behind. He said, we want to find out early if we can move out in front. I think that'll be a real clue to this game if Ohio State can get an early lead. It's, uh, they don't have the varied offense to play catch-up football. Right, and Kurt, they can move the ball better than most people think. Nine and one is a great record. They can go up top. The truth is, Kurt, they cannot afford to get behind. You're absolutely right. I believe the first lady has arrived. Mrs. Nixon, she uh, was in the parade. She rode in the parade this morning. And uh, Mrs. Pat Nixon, the first lady, has arrived at the Rose Bowl. We'll view the game here. Her husband spent a football morning. He had as his guest for brunch this morning in the White House, George Allen, the coach of the Washington Redskins, who are going to be playing Miami in a Super Bowl game, which will be seen on NBC the 14th of January. She is now being announced to the crowd. So Mrs. Nixon takes her seat. Ohio State, USC are in their dressing rooms. And uh, we're going to have the parade of dignitaries here. So that's been it for a preview look at the Rose Bowl game. And we'll be right back following station identification for USC. This is Nixon, USC, and Ohio State in the 1973 Rose Bowl game. Who told me Mrs. The Rose Bowl next, followed by the Orange Bowl, a football doubleheader on NBC. Seventy-three Rose Bowl game is brought to you by your Dodge dealer, who invites you to see the big dog, and by Goodyear, makers of the new custom steel guard radial tire, and by Texaco, and the many thousands of independent retailers and distributors in all 50 states. Hi, 
everybody, Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Rogatis on behalf of NBC Sports, wishing you a very happy new year. And today, John McKay against Woody Hayes. All week, these two coaches have been asked a lot of questions. Mostly, is this game for the national championship? Is this for the number one team in America? Woody Hayes said it should be. McKay at first said no. Now he said, let it go for that. If that's what Hayes wants, he's in town, that's what it's going to be. But I think the one real question that should be asked both coaches, and which we've done, is how does it feel to play in the Rose Bowl as a player, as a coach, or players in future years? And so, first of all, we went to Woody Hayes, 22 years, and asked him about the Rose Bowl. This is our third time in five years. It's quite a chore, it's a lot of work, but it's all worth it because we not only regard it as the oldest, of the bowl games, but it's the best one. And we're certainly playing a super team this year in Southern Cal. They always represent this conference out here well. We like to feel we do the same for the great Big Ten Conference from which we come. So it'll be a great football game. We're the underdogs, but when you're in that position, then you play it from the heart. Of course, playing from the heart seems to be the theme for Coach Woody Hayes. It has been in all his winning seasons, his players. And the same for John McKay and USC. McKay, though, I think puts a little bit different slant on it, especially when he speaks on behalf of the Pac-8 conference. Of course, the Rose Bowl is the goal of all teams in our conference, and I think all the teams in the Big Ten. Uh, this university has appeared in 17 times. I've been fortunate to appear five times. This is my sixth time. I can think of no greater thrill for a college coach or a college football player in playing in this game. Uh, some of the great players of all time have played in it. Uh, we're going to play a very, very fine team in Ohio State, and uh, we think it's going to be a great game. And, we hope you have a lot of fun. Thank you. And now coming on to the field, the Grand Marshal, Michael Morrison Wayne, Duke Wayne. The fireman nicknamed him when they used to keep his dog when he went to Glendale High School and a football player at USC. And he's with Otto, Otis uh, Blassingham, the tournament president. John Wayne, a very popular choice as Grand Marshal. 50 years ago, he said he used to help pin up some of the flowers for the parade, and it took him 50 years to decide to make him the Grand Marshal. And here are the queens. The queen is Sally Ann Norn, a 20-year-old beauty from Altadena, California. And her princesses are Michelle Marie Vezzadini, Gail Andrea Durrell, Melanie Lee Irwin, Janet J. Carr, Jimmy Lou Bates, and Karen Lee Sell, the queen and her princesses. Let's quickly talk about the weather. The wind has died down. It was gusting 30 to 50 miles an hour. A wind coming off the heights of Utah down through Santa Ana, and there was some danger that the wind would raise havoc with the parade. It didn't, but you can see the trees, the wind, and once again, Al, what is the strategy? This wind's going to be stronger at times today than it keeps gusting up and down. That's right, Kurt. You know, other than the wind, the setting is just magnificent. I've never seen weather like this, frankly. Strategy altered somewhat, but not necessarily in any big way. Again, the ball is going to be on the ground. We may see some passing. Ohio State hasn't been overwhelmingly in the passing game in the past. All right, let's go down on the field now and pick up the Ohio State band. all-time record crowd of over 104,000 will be on their feet 
temperature in the 60s. The Ohio State Band will be maneuvering, and then we're going to have our national anthem. to honor America, you are invited to join the Ohio State University Marching Band under the direction of Dr. Paul Droste in singing our national anthem. the new year. Now let's meet some of the outstanding players of the nation's number one ranked team, the USC Trojans, that filmed at one of their practice sessions. Lynn Swan, flanker, junior. Charles Young, senior, tight end. David Brown, senior center. Tennessee, go! Mike Ryan, senior, offensive guard. Alan Graff, senior, offensive guard. Pete Adams, offensive tackle, senior. Alan Gallagher, offensive tackle, senior. 64, go! Sam Cunningham, senior, fullback. Andy Davis, sophomore, tailback. Morning, go! Mike Ray, senior, quarterback. Morning, go! Jeff Winans, senior, defensive tackle. John Grant, senior, defensive tackle. Morning, go! Richard Woods, sophomore linebacker. Good time. Coach. Steve Fate, senior, defensive back. Charles Hinton, senior, defensive back. The Trojans are good. There's no doubt about it. And the Ohio State team knows exactly that. They're very good. In one of the greatest settings, frankly, that we have ever seen, Citrus College, we met some of these Ohio State football players, outstanding young people, huge guys, and they really know how to play this football game. Steve Luke. Sophomore center. Jim Kriegel, junior guard. Chuck Bonica, senior guard. Merv Teague, senior, left offensive tackle. John Hicks, offensive tackle, junior. Fred Pugach, junior. Tied in. Greg Hare, junior, quarterback. Greg Hare, junior, quarterback. Pearl 
Charles Henson, sophomore, fullback. Randy Keith, junior, fullback. Arch Griffin, freshman, tailback. Rick Galvis, senior, wingback. George Rosenau, senior, defensive tackle. Now, senior defensive end. Chad okay. Williams, defensive tackle, of course, with Ohio. Senior. Well, that's the background. They're just about ready. USC, Ohio State for the opening kickoff. And we'll be back here in Pasadena in one minute. Sam! Sam, it's Faye! Doc says she's ready! Then I'll borrow your car. What's wrong with your car? This is not a Dodge Charger, Sam. It hasn't got torsion quiet ride like your Charger SE or electronic ignition or all that room. Sam, I want Faye to ride in this kind of style. I'll get the keys. Extra care and engineering makes a difference in Dodge. Depend on it. We're going to get you there. It's a good girl. <laughs> Allstate can't put it out, but we can sure help put back what it destroys. Allstate Homeowners Insurance gives you more protection at less cost than similar policies from many other companies. Loss from fire, theft, vandalism, and many other hazards. If you own a house, you need to be in good hands. You're in good hands with Allstate. This is the newest copier in the IBM line. As you can see, this plain paper copier lets you feed in originals continuously. And it doesn't keep you waiting around for your copies to appear either. At IBM, we think one of the most important things about a copier is how fast it actually lets you make copies. The new copier 2 from IBM. today will be Ohio State. They just burst out in the field. Big roar from the stands down below us. Thousands of Ohio State rooters are here, and they're bouncing up and down like yoga sticks, just the way they were against Michigan when they came out of their locker room. Hayes is many things to many people. He's a very articulate man, very bright, and he can talk to young people. He can get them up. So Ohio State now comes to the sidelines. The captains are moving out. Rick Galvis, George Hazenhall are the regular captains for the year. Gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Commander, we also have Mr. Cunningham and Captain John, John Grant. Here are the officials. Captain we'll give them to you later. Like to We're going to have the toss of the coin ceremony. Ohio State. Number 75 is Bert Tegg. Number 70 is George Hosnall. Number 74 is John Hicks. And 33 is Rick Galbo. Gentlemen, our officiating crew today, our line judge is Bob Fallon. Our back judge is Jake Light. The umpire is Victor Bukowitz. And our field judge is Bob Broadbeck. Our head linesman is Tom Cross. Our alternate official is Jack Roberts. Ohio State will call the coin toss, and I'll toss it and catch it. You'll call it while it's in the air. Here we go. Tails. We call tails. It is tails. You have won the toss. Kick receives it. You want the ball. Kicking off from which direction, man? This way? OK, you want to kick this way, OK? Gentlemen, come together. I have a coin, the Pacific Gate, I'll give to each team, and you gentlemen can flip for it. Now, if you shake hands and get your teams right out here. What do we do? Shake hands. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network.
Richard Gowdy and Aldi Rogatis. Ohio State in white. Southern Cal is spreading out. Woody Hayes with a last talk. Look at him go. And the famous Buckeye battle cry playing in the background. John McKay seeking his 100th coaching victory today. Woody Hayes is going after his 150th this afternoon. It's unusual to see a tailback kick off. But Anthony Davis, the star running back of USC, on the small side when you look at him, is going to be kicking off. He has a very strong leg, and McKay says he's going to make him into the field goal kicker next year. The boy doesn't want to do it, but that's what it's going to be. He's a superb athlete, an excellent baseball player. Archie Griffin is the middleman, number 45. Bash Nagel, number 48. And Holy Cross, 27, are deep. The wind is swirling around. You can't really tell from what direction it's coming from. Here's the kick. It's a short one. And running up on that one is a freshman, Bashnagel, on the 20, 25, and is spun down in the 28-yard line. So Ohio State will move into action now on their 28. Bollinger downfield for USC to make the hit. Greg Hare will be the quarterback. He's number 18. Archie Griffin. 45, Henson 38, Galvos 33, the running backs. They're in the robust tier, the old straight T. Hare on the option is hit by Sims. James Sims, number 41, a junior from Los Angeles. And he practically plays in the opponent's backfield. He's very quick, and he gambles and penetrates in the play. He's throwing back for two. It's to the 26-yard line of Ohio State. Second down, 12 to go. That Sims fella, Kurt, twice this year has been the defensive back for this Trojan team. All right, Smurt has checked in as a tight end now for Ohio State. He's a four-stringer. Ball given off to Griffin, and he's jammed up at his 27. Monty Doris, who plays the nose guard or the middle guard in the five-man front line for USC, hit him. The yard gain, it'll be third and 11. Dale Mitchell is the left end, 85. They flop around at times. John Grant, the All-Americans, left tackle, 94. Doris, the middleman, 72. Jeff Winans, 92, the right tackle. And Sims, 41, the end. Holy Cross into the game. Smurt has come out. Third and 11. And with this win today, passing may be treacherous. Ohio State, Greg Hare. They run it, they give it to Griffin, and he spills over the 30 to his 32. A gain of five, but they're way short. It'll be fourth down, six to go. And coming in now to punt is Gary Lago, who is the top kicker in the Big Ten this year, averaging 41 and a half yards a kick. And he's going against the best punt return man on the West Coast, Lynn Swan, number 22, who in one game this year ran punts back for 157 yards against Michigan State the best single game effort of the college season. Okay, okay. Beautiful kick. Beautiful. Back to the 20 is fumbled and it's out of bounds on the 15. And the ball was fumbled by Hinton. Chuck Hinton, number 26. So USC now is pinned back on their 15 yard line. We talked we talked about that win, Kurt. And we said it could be a factor in, in the punting game. In practice, they were having a difficult time. It just drifts away from you. Fortunate kick. It's out of bounds. That was a 53-yard punt. No return. Take that any time, wouldn't you? No, oh, beauty. All right, USC will have Mike Ray at quarterback, number six. Out of their stack eye, Anthony Davis is the tailback, 28. Cunningham's the fullback, 39. Swan is the flanker, 22. Mike Ray is going in motion to Swan. And Davis is hit at the 16-yard line by Randy Gratishar, number 53, the All-American linebacker. Second down, nine to go. He Edessel Garrison, number 19, is the split end. The man who made everybody's All-American, Charles Young, 89, is the tight end. 
Pete Adams, Steve Riley at tackles, Mike Ryan, Alan Graff at guards, and Dave Brown is the center. Second down nine for USC. No score. Two and a half minutes gone. Mike Ray from Lakewood, California. Anthony Davis again comes over to 20. Amazing balance. Johnny McKay must have been asked a thousand times who does he run like, Garrison or Garrett? Here's a replay, Kurt. They were stacked to the inside, Ohio State. Nicely, Anthony Davis takes it to the outside, follows his interference well, does quite a bit on his own. And you know, Al, when you figure he didn't start until the eighth game and still wound up gaining 707 yards, you know how incredible he had to be in the last three, four games of the season for USC. You know, Kurt, also looking at the state defense, they're playing their two of their four linemen very wide. Gratishar and Middleton, the two excellent linebackers, are jamming that middle. It looks like it's inviting for the Trojans. It may not be. Now the coach's son, J.K. McKay, has replaced Garrison as a wide receiver. McKay will be number 25. In motion to Swan. Davis hit before he could get to the line of scrimmage. Magnificent charge there by number 88, Van Decree, and 53, Gratishar, the linebacker. He's six foot three. He's 232 pounds. He's a junior, and he's the man, really, they've got to beat. 53, moving to the outside, coming back. Quite a bit of help, Kurt. Great pursuit. Manfred Moore, number 44, has come in as fullback now for USC. You notice that time that Ray, the quarterback, went back and gave the ball to Davis deep. That's to give Davis some time to look over the situation. To pick out his hole. Well, he sort of delays back there. Juan in motion again, a flag down. That's against USC, illegal procedure. And I believe he may, Al, have started the man in motion toward the line of scrimmage. So on the 19-yard line of USC, they have a second down and 16. We have no score, 11 minutes to play in the first period. We were talking, Kurt, about those linebackers. Rick Middleton, number 32, generally plays the offside. Gratishar plays the strong side. Uh, tough. There's Middleton, very quick. Now, this is their power eye. Swan in motion. McKay is flanked to the left. Ray for his first pass. Sets up the screen with the 20. Davis out. And is down on his 30-yard line by Rick Middleton, the wide linebacker, number 32. Anthony Davis caught 15 passes this year. They have a varied attack. McKay caught 25. Charlie Young, the tight end, 23. Swan, 21. Davis, 15. So they have four or five outstanding targets to throw to. Third down now for USC on their 30-yard line. Cunningham is back in at fullback. Anthony Moore is out. They're all the USC records that the sophomore set this year. He's going to throw on third and five. He can move. He's under the gun. He's, he's one up desperately. And this one is out of bounds. But he was just throwing out of desperation. He threw the big rainbow lob up there in the field of play. That could have been intercepted. How about this state defensive line, Kurt? Now, they're really penetrating. We were tremendously impressed with the Trojans' offensive front. Huge people, very quick. Don't estimate, uh, underestimate this uh, Ohio State defensive front. They really come. And Tim Holycross, who goes to Ohio State, a sophomore from Bedford Heights, Ohio, is back as a safety man. In punt formation will be Dave Bulware, who averaged 35 and a half yards, going against the wind. Kicks it low. Wobble job. Hits on the 45. And he gets a few extra yards in the bounce. And it winds up all right for USC. It's dead on the Ohio State 34-yard line. We have a timeout now in the Rose Bowl with a score. USC nothing. Ohio State nothing. Introducing the new Goodyear Custom Steel Guard Radio. The 40,000-mile tire with five guards to help protect you five ways. Guard one, against rough ride. A shock-absorbing polyester cord body. 
guard two against penetration under the tread, two strong steel belts. Guard three against wet skids. A computer-designed tread channels the water in wet weather. Guard four against loss of road contact on curves. Two special outer grooves allow the tread and the sidewall to work independently for firm tread contact. Guard five against sluggish handling. Special stabilizers stiffen the sidewall and help allow recovery on sudden turns. With the new Goodyear Steel Guard radial, you get the five guard feeling. The confidence of control, only from Goodyear. At Ohio State offense on the ground, 270 yards this season as usual, Ohio State ran the ball six times for every time they passed it, a six to one ratio. Ohio State on their 34. They gained two yards in the exchange of punts. Greg Hare. For Archie Griffin, a freshman. How about a freshman playing in the Rose Bowl game? Isn't that something? A hometown Columbus boy. Archie Griffin picked his way to his 40-yard line. Richwood has great speed. He almost overshoots the play here. He's 9'8". Imagine that. A sophomore linebacker, 18, 9'8", 100. He comes back. Great speed. Elizabeth, New Jersey. Thomas Jefferson High School. What a football player. They call him the Batman because he does miraculous things. Ohio State on their 40. Second down four. Out of their eye. A slot eye. Once again, they run little Griffin, and he breaks it. He's to the 50, and the USC territory at the USC 49-yard line. The left tackle, John Grant, nailed him from behind. But it's a first down for Ohio State. Kurt, an interesting story in this game is the center, Steve Luke. Steve is starting this game because Steve Myers is out ill with uh, mononucleosis, and he has Monty Doris on his, no on his nose. Much outweighed, but he's doing a good job. There he is. Ohio State on the Trojan 49, first down, no score, 8.45 to play in the first period. First man through is Randy Keith, the fullback, a junior. He's just replaced Champ Henson, and Keith carries the ball to the USC 42. Richard Wood, the sophomore linebacker, who made some of the All-American teams in his first year of college ball, made the tackle. Now going in a tight end is Ted Powell replacing Fred Pugich. The ball is on the 42-yard line of USC. Ohio State in possession. They have a second and three. And right now, they're out playing USC. Out of the slot eye. The hand is to Griffin. He slips away, and this amazing freshman runs it to the 30-yard line. He slipped away from Jeff Winans, the tackle, who had him contained. Watch him slip out of this. 6'4", 256 pounds, Winans. This is the freshman, 239 yards against North Carolina to set a school record in the first game he ever played. All right, the Buckeyes up, a 14-point underdog, look ready to play today. Now they're in a wide slot. With Griffin and Keith, and Randy Keith, the junior from Cincinnati, gets a couple. It's a very young Ohio State team. On this offensive team you're looking at right now, there are only three seniors, four juniors, three sophomores, and one freshman. And they have only one senior on their starting defensive team. You know, Kurt, looking at the USC, and if you were to say, what is the strategy? Well, you attack speed. They've got great speed in those linebackers. You can't run away from them. Run at them. Second down, seven to go. Ohio State on the USC 27. A nothing-nothing game in the first period. Archie Griffin, six brothers in the family, all football players. Three of them have played college football. Archie Griffin slowed up on the 26-yard line of uh, USC by Monty Doris and Jeff Winan. And now Larry Wiggins is coming in at left guard, replacing Jim Kregel for Ohio State. Probably the greatest asset that Greg Hare, 18, has is that he can run and run well. And Morris Bradshaw has gone into the wide receiver, number 25, replacing Mike Bertosi. Hare running the option. The pitch out to Galvis, the wing back, and he appears to be short of the first down as he slammed out of bounds on the Trojan 21 by Artemis Parker, the safety man of USC from Sacramento. 
And you saw Galvis, the offensive captain, signal over. We're about that short. Ohio State has marched from their own 34 to the 21 yard line of USC. They have fourth down, a short yard to go. And Larry Wiggins goes back in at left guard. Now let's see what they do. Randy Keith and Archie Griffin are lined up behind Greg Hare. Crowd now has its first suspenseful moment. Fourth and a short yard to go. And it is given to Keith. And it's very close. Very close. They'll certainly have to measure this. And the officials call for the measurement. Oh, USC is held. USC held. And Richard Wood got in there underneath. They delayed a bit on that handoff. It was a delay. You wonder, Al, on a quick hitter, how they'd have done. Right, Kurt. They would. They have been se very successful on that quick burst, and suddenly they went away from it. And now we have a timeout. With 6:17 to play in the first period, the score is nothing to nothing. I'm Jerry Lucas, not the youngest guy in the league, so I work out to stay in shape. I'm talking about my hair. Every day I give it a 60-second Vitalis workout. It stimulates my scalp and makes my whole head feel good. Leaves my hair neat and healthy looking. Do something nice for your scalp and hair. Work out every day with Vitalis. The Vitalis 60-second workout. Now for all fishermen who are reeling from cramped quarters, Dodge extends itself to bring you the Club Cab Sweat Line, the pickup with storage space inside for the things you don't want to leave outside. From Dodge, depend on it. And now for all shoppers who come home more squashed than the squash, Dodge extends itself to bring you the Club Cab Sweat Line, the pickup with storage space inside for the things you don't want to leave outside. From Dodge, depend on it. That was a 46-yard drive that Ohio State put on. It stalled on the USC 20. And now it's first down for USC. So far, they've been outplayed by Ohio State. Mike Ray looking down, and he has his man at the 40. And that's Lynn Swan, who came back a step or two. Lynn Swan is tackled by Jeff Davis. This is what Woody's afraid of the balance of the Trojan team. They could run it, but when they have to, they can throw it. Good protection. Good completion. Lynn Swan, according to USC, is to them what Johnny Rogers is to Nebraska. You'll see Rogers later in the Orange Bowl right after this game on NBC, the Heisman Trophy winner. Now, J.K. McKay is in the game, and Garrison is out as a wide receiver. Davis is slung down there at the 41 by Van Decree, number 88. Watch this charge by the defensive end, Van Decree. Curry, he's 6'1", and he's 216 pounds, closing down the line. Now, that's coming from the offside. That's getting across, Al. Boy, it sure is. If you're not big, Kurt, you better be fast. Davis has carried the ball four times for 11 yards. They're flanking Swan to the left and McKay to the right. Manfred Moore now is in at fullback, replacing Sam Cunningham. Second down eight for USC on their 41. A play-action pass. Gets away from Hazenhall to the 40, and then two white-shirted Ohio State men knock him out, led by Shad Williams, number 79, second-string right tackle to Pete Cusick. Shad Williams, 79, a senior from Portsmouth, Ohio. Carried the way this defensive team is coming and the way they seem to be slashing and showing great pursuit, they could be a little vulnerable to the screen pass. Third down and six for USC on their 43. The quarterback, Greg Hare. 5-13 to play in the first period, nothing to nothing. <laughs> well, he's got time. And Manfred Moore fumbles the ball out of bounds. I believe he stepped out, though, on his 48-yard line. And while they line it up, the seventh in a series of football classics will be seen on NBC this year on Sunday the 14th. It's the coverage of the Super Bowl game. Our coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern time with a one-hour film history of the six Super Bowl games. At 3 o'clock, we'll have the Super Bowl 
pregame show. Joe Namath lending his expertise. He picked the last one he worked with is right on the nose. Three points. Baltimore over Dallas. And then Super Bowl seven, Washington against Miami. And they're going for it. Fourth down on their 49, fourth and a foot. They have it. Sam Cunningham, who gets that yardage hurdling, 225 pounds, can run the 100 under 10 seconds. Sam Cunningham picks up the first down. And you see where they put Sam, not in the up position, but in the back position. He is big. This fella has got to be outstanding. Manfred Moore makes a good block. Huge. He could hit that line very well. Boy, he's a good one. This is the first time USC has been in Ohio State territory. They're on the Ohio State 48. No score, just under five minutes to play in the first period. Fake to Davis. Flag is down. Here's a deep pass, and it is incomplete, but a flag was dropped at the line of scrimmage. And they were trying to hit Lynn Swan, who can fly. Very dangerous man. It's a legal procedure against USC. They'll talk it over with Hazen Hall, the All-American tackle, defensive captain number 70. See what he wants to do. He's going to decline it. It'll be second down 10 for USC on the Ohio State 48. You may be wondering why they declined it. This is Woody's strategy. Try to get the Trojans in a second and 10 position. Now Swan, after that long run on the deep post pattern, goes out, and Dave Bolware, number seven, comes in. Woody Hayes, who says, show me a good loser, and I'll show you a loser. Second down, 10. In motion is Bolware. The pitch is to Davis. He's got blocking. And he streaks it out. Boy, he just, uh, he keeps those feet close to the ground. He reminds you a lot of Clarence Davis. He's now with the Oakland Raiders. He wears Clarence's number, 28. Watch the blockers also, though, Kurt. 89, Charlie Young. That's Manfred Moore. Young is to the outside. Made a great block. Alan Graff hitting in there. Manfred following him. Oops. AD just ran by his blocker. All right, Cunningham back in. Replacing Moore. J.K. McKay replaces Garrison as a wide man. USC moving now. First down on the Ohio State, 33. Ray under the gun. Throws it out. It's incomplete. And he was trying to hit Bullware over there, pinned against the far sideline, but he was well protected by Jeff Davis. 49-year-old John McKay, who was an All-Pacific Coast Conference halfback at Oregon, played in the same backfield with Dutch Van Brocklin. We've seen a great deal of the zone defense this year, Kurt. Ohio State is using it right now. Linebackers are making big drops. They again have the team in a second and 10 position. Second down, 10. USC has really picked up yardage on first downs this year. There's Davis on that student body right, as McKay calls it. They pull the guard, they pull the tackle, they have the fullback out leading and even the quarterback. And the play is called student body right or student body left. Five or six blockers out in front of the tailback, Anthony Davis. It winds up in the 28 of Ohio State, third down and five. Southern Cal in possession, and here's Swan going out. And Bulwer coming in as a wide receiver. And uh, timeout on the officials as George Hazenhall comes to the sideline. Going into replacing is Pete Cusick, number 71. I don't know whether there's something wrong with Hazenhall or it's an equipment. No, it seems to be him. On Friday night, Ghost Story becomes a new series of bizarre tales when Circle of Fear premieres. It'll be right here Friday night, 9 o'clock on NBC. Third down. Five to go. USC on the Ohio State 28. No score. Four and a half minutes to play in the first third. There it is again. And Davis skips out of bounds. And they're going to place him out on the Ohio State 25. Rick Middleton forced him out. The junior from Delaware, Ohio. And the state defense, Kurt, is really playing run. It's surprising that the Trojans can move it against this defense. Even Doug Plank, number 28, play, playing that strong safety. He comes driving up there. USC has had two third down attempts. 
fail to convert either time. Same for Ohio State. Third down, a fourth down, two and a half. Fourth and two and a half. That's the power eye. Ray is going to throw it. And just as he let it go, he was hit. It's incomplete. Ray is decked back there by 71. Pete Cusick and 88. Van Decree, who put a marvelous pass rush on him. They think a great deal of Pete Cus Cusick. He's 6'2", 231, 19 years old. He's a sophomore. The pass protection has been breaking down uh, for you, uh, the Trojans. There's uh, Pete coming in. Got by Alan Graff, a good guard. Time out here in the Rose Bowl with a score. Ohio State nothing, USC nothing. The Ohio State backfield has Griffin and Keith in back of Hare, the quarterback. They give it to Griffin, and Archie Griffin's to the 30-yard line. The very, very first game this youngster started, he gained 239 yards against North Carolina, which was an all-time Ohio State single-game rushing record as an 18-year-old freshman. Mrs. Nixon... Ohio State... On their 30-yard line, second down, five. Both teams have had fourth down play stop deep in the other team's territory. Right on the ground they go. Randy Keith runs at the fullback. You might wonder why Harold Champ Henson is not in it anymore. The uh, leading scorer in the nation with 20 touchdowns. Well, Randy Keith is a better blocker, and they're going now to the tailback offense. And they just take Henson out, but their Griffin's been running well. So they've been having Keith in there to block for Griffin. Now Henson has gone into the game. Holy Cross, there's Keith out. Holy Cross is out. They have a third down now and about a half yard to go. Just short of their 35. This is a power attack right here, the old straight T. They give it to Henson and... He wriggles off his left guard. He's hit there by Charles Anthony, number 55, the linebacker. And it's a first down for Ohio State. The Trojans continue to use their 50 defense, a five-man line, two linebackers. Really, they're playing the end positions, but they really look more like linebackers. They're not that big. The attack, Kurt, again, if you can hit right at that middle man and get one block on a linebacker. This hair is dangerous on sprint outs. He has long, loping strides. First down, Ohio State on their 36. No score. Late in the first period. Fumble, and it's picked up by USC. Coming up for the ball is Charles Phillips, number 49. That ball squirted out of Griffin's hands. There's the first turnover in the game. And the USC defense all year forced mistakes. It was so quick and aggressive. USC has the ball. Phillips, by the way, is the second string right cornerback or whatever side of the field they want him to play on. Southern Cal now on the Ohio 38-yard line with two minutes, 41 seconds to go in the first period. No score. Mike Ray puts them down. In motion is Lynn Swan. Fake to Davis. Throws it out to the tight end, Charlie Young, in a crossing pattern. And the All-American tight end, the best he's ever coached, says McKay, is out of bounds on the Ohio State 26. They call Young the tree 
He is six feet, four and a half, weighs 230. So that play goes for a first down. Kerry, both offensive lines have some outstanding players. John Hicks of Ohio State is a true All-American. Woody Hayes says he's the greatest, and that's saying something, offensive lineman he has. Pete Adams, 77, a very good one for the Trojans. First down, Southern Colony, Ohio State, 26. McKay is in now as a wide receiver. The flip is to Davis. Davis to the 15 and down to the 10. And finally piled up at the 7 by Randy Gratishar. Boy, he just glides with those. Boy, well, you're right, steps. Kurt. And he just gets super people out in front of him. This is really student body right. There's Graff. There's Cunningham. That's Charles uh, Young making a block. Student body right goes pretty good. Three weeks after the Rose Bowl game, Anthony Davis will report to the USC baseball team. He's an outfielder, and they say he's a brilliant prospect. That's one of the reasons he came to school. He wanted to play uh, baseball at USC under Daydu, their famous baseball coach. Davis hit. Boy, was he decked there at the 10. A great charge by Pete Cusick, number 71, a sophomore. That's a, way, that's a quick charge by a tackle across that line. Well, they lost three. It's second down now and 10 for a USC touchdown. They send McKay left. Swan is the slot back inside of him. Anthony Davis has already made 50 yards in the game. And they're throwing to Swan for a touchdown. Swan for the score. Glenn Swan, a Foster City, California junior. A punt returner, a great pass receiver, and a runner on the flanker reverse. And he was wide open, Kurt. Got some good protection. Easy TD. By the way, George Hazenall is still out of the game. They're working on his right arm. Mike Scannell is in there. Well, they took advantage of the first turnover. They went 38 yards in four plays, and they score with a minute 30 to go in the first period. Mike Ray. The Pat Hayden holding. Ray's kick is up, and it is good. Well, USC finally struck. They were outplayed for about the first two-thirds of the first period. And there's Swan. Bad news to opponents next year. He'll be back. And there goes the Trojan horse across the field. An imposing figure. Now we talk about Anthony Davis kicking off. He does kick off, but very wisely. John McKay doesn't send him down. On the kickoff team, he'll hit the ball, and then he plays defensive safety. So tailback Anthony Davis will kick off. Archie Griffin, Brian Bashnagel, and Tim Holy Cross are back deep. Griffin's the middleman. This one is coming to Bashnagel, a freshman on the five. Keeping that ball away from Griffin. He's trying to get outside. Hayes up to the 25, 30. He gets a move here, 40. Beautiful run by a freshman, Brian Bashnagel of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who is a star of the future for Ohio State. He was a good pass receiver and has the moves to be a dangerous runner. A 39-yard kickoff return by Bashnagel. Jim Givehan. A reserve in brought him down. So good operating position now for Ohio State. They're on their own 44-yard line. So far, USC's had the ball 622, Ohio State seven minutes in the game. There's a pass to Holy Cross, nearly intercepted by Eddie Johnson, number 11. That ball would have been floated higher. Holy Cross was running by Eddie Johnson. The play-action pass. That's the first pass that Ohio State's attempted in the game. He's now in the second and ten, Kurt. Not the greatest position. He likes to use Rick Galbos. 
He has an opportunity outside. The linebackers, as we have indicated, are playing inside. Sophomore Davis is 50 yards. Freshman Griffin is 43 yards. Here's the option. They pitch it to Griffin. It's up to his 45. And they seal him in. That's what USC does very well with their speed. That's James Sims, a very quick end up front, 41. And Charlie Phillips, a cornerback, 49. Hard to run outside on this team. Right, Kurt. They played that option well. One guy played off the blocker. The next one was going to take the run away from the quarterback, forcing the pitch, and the halfback came up and made the play. John McKay, with his team leading 7-0, has taken Sims out. And Ed Powell has gone into the defensive end. Here's Herr. His pass is good. To the 39-yard line of USC, Tim Holy Cross, and Hare drilled that one in there. This fellow is, uh, is a good passer. He has a very strong arm on him. He does, Kurt. He shows it here. He is big and rangy and kind of the tradition of the Ohio State quarterbacks. And he's, uh, Woody Hayes has had some good ones. First down for Ohio State in the USC 39. We're in the last 20 seconds of the first period. Holy Cross is spread to the right. He's the only man outside. And bursting through is Archie Griffin. And the freshman runs it to the 25-yard line. With these quick hitters up the middle, the Ohio State front wall of Craig Luke and Bonica is opening up holes. Right. Remember, Steve Luke is their late replacement. And he's doing a fine job against his five. There's a good block, uh, pull away, really, from Charles Anthony, right to the safety man. This is the kind of play, Kurt, that made this man get uh, some 772 yards this year. And he already has 59 yards in this game, Al. Archie Griffin, in the first period, gained 59 yards in the ground. That's the end of the first quarter. The score, USC 7, Ohio State nothing. A his and hers guide to Big Dodge 73. For her, more room, more beauty and comfort with automatic transmission and power steering standard. For him, rugged torsion bar suspension, power front disc brakes, dependable electronic ignition, and one of the biggest trunks in America. And for both of you, a price that may surprise you. Extra care in engineering makes a difference in the big Dodge. Depend on it. Men, watch Joe Namath get cream. Let not see my cream your face. So the razor won't. Let not see my cream your face. So the razor don't. The closer you shave, the more you need creamy, soothing, medicated Noxema. Let not see my cream your face. So the razor don't. That's the Ohio State band, Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Rogatis, beginning a second period. Ohio State's on the Southern Cal 25-yard line with a first down. Greg Hare to Randy Keith. And Randy Keith cracks forward to the 21-yard line of USC, hit there by Richard Wood. And George Fuller, who now is playing the middle guard. Right, Kurt. And if Ohio State is trying to take the wide sweeps away from uh, USC, USC obviously better try to take that inside play, and, and Follett is going to be a key man. He's head on the center. Second down, six.